Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a video on incremental writing and incremental writing was an idea that was first developed by George Sonius and Piotr Wozniak, sort of in collaboration with each other. While the term incremental writing was developed in the context of Supermovo, there are a ton of systems, for example, Settlecast and Evergreen Notes, Rome and Obsidian, that implement very, very similar workflows. And today I'm actually going to be showing you a plugin I wrote for Obsidian that implements a sort of super memo style of incremental writing in Obsidian. So before we get into the details about incremental writing, I strongly recommend that you go and watch my video on incremental reading because I really see incremental writing as the opposite of incremental reading. I really think that they exist as part of the same cycle of creation and destruction, which I will explain later in this video. So to briefly summarise the difference between incremental reading and incremental writing, when I do incremental reading, I sort of think of myself as a knowledge goblin miner with a pickaxe, and I'm chipping away at books and articles, looking for the golden nuggets that I can refine into flashcards and maintain over time with space repetition. Incremental writing can be thought of as the opposite process. Rather than a knowledge goblin miner, I'm a knowledge goblin blacksmith. I'm taking the nuggets that I found when I was mining, I'm throwing them into the forge, where they will get blended and mixed together in new combinations and gradually they'll sort of combine and blend back together into a comprehensive whole, a solid gold bar of an article that I can publish into the world. So I'm going to stop talking about goblins now and give you some actual concrete examples of how incremental reading and incremental writing combine to form this cycle of destruction and creation that I mentioned earlier. I'm going to give you sort of a recipe for incremental writing um, with some examples in Obsidian and Supermemo. So the first step in the recipe for incremental writing is going to be one of destruction. And this is going to include importing material, prioritizing it, and using incremental reading to split up articles and books into extracts and flashcards that you can review incrementally over time with spaced repetition. For the demonstration, I'm going to be using Supermemo because it's probably the number one program for incremental reading right now. So here, what you can see me doing is just importing all of the material that I want to uh, take extracts from into my collection. And immediately after importing, the next step that I always do is to prioritize each element so that when I see my queue of elements every day, I start with the elements that are most important to me, that are the highest priority, that contain the most valuable information. And that means that even if I don't have enough time to finish all of the elements in my queue every single day, then I at least know that I spent my limited attention on those elements that are most important to me, that I'm most likely to find valuable golden nuggets in. Each time I take an extract, what I'm doing is I'm adding that into my learning queue as an independent piece of information, not connected to the parent article at all. And that means that it's allowed to float freely, uh, to be mixed in with the sum of my knowledge in my entire collection. Here you can see me adding priorities to the extracts as well. So having extracted them from the parent article, I've recognised that they may have a different priority to the parent article itself. They may contain either more valuable or less valuable information than the parent article. So I want to prioritize it to reflect that. So at this point, I've recognized that there are some similarities between the extracts that I've taken from the parent articles. And so I move them under one folder so that I can group them together and start uh, making connections between the ideas contained within each extract. Some of the extracts contain what I consider to be highly applicable and generalizable information that I want to maintain over time. So I encode that information as uh, flashcards. You should bear in mind that this is a really condensed view of the process. You wouldn't do all of this in one session. This could be taking place over months or even years, possibly. <laughs> Finally, you can think of the destruction the incremental reading part of the process as uh, the ascending part of the process because the number of individual pieces of information grows, it sort of expands um, up until the point where you start uh, transitioning from incremental reading into incremental writing. Once you transition into the incremental writing phase, 
what you'll find is that you'll start grouping these smaller pieces of text into larger and larger pieces of text. So sentences into paragraphs, paragraphs into chapters, and so on. And so the number of individual pieces of information will begin to decrease. And so it becomes the descending part of the process. So the second stage in the recipe is one of creation. And this is going to involve you taking the extracts that you made during incremental reading and grouping them based on the similarities that you recognize between them. You're also going to be creatively elaborating on your own ideas incrementally over time. So for the concrete demonstration, I'm going to be using Obsidian because I found it to be extremely convenient for writing and it really integrates well with the wiki software that I use to publish my articles. I also recently wrote a plugin to do incremental writing in Obsidian in sort of the super memo style, which I'm going to show you in this demonstration. Okay, so here what you're seeing is all of the commands available in the incremental writing plugin at the moment. So you can add blocks to your queue, you can add notes to your queue, you can load the current repetition, you can go to the next repetition and so on. And so what I'm going to do immediately is add something to the queue so that you can actually see what the queue looks like and what information is contained within it. So here I'm setting the priority on the note I'm adding to my incremental writing queue. So this is the incremental writing queue in Obsidian and um, it's literally just a markdown table that you can edit if you wish and you can also view it in preview mode and it makes it look pretty. The A factor and the interval just control the spacing of the item that you've added to your incremental writing queue over time and the last repetition represents the last repetition date. So what you can see me doing here is just adding each of the uh, extracts that I created in Supermemo uh, to my incremental writing queue in Obsidian, uh, adding priorities, how important these sections are uh, to the article that I want to write. And like I said, it is possible to also add blocks, individual blocks of text within Note uh, to your incremental writing queue if you just want to focus on a single block. And like I said in the incremental reading section, the reason we prioritise our notes and blocks is that we want our time to be spent on those things that are most valuable to us. So even if we don't have time to finish our entire queue of incremental writing, um, at least you know that you spent your time on those things that are most important to you. So now you can see that I've filled out my queue and I'm ready to uh, start going through it. So I loaded the current repetition and I start off simply by refactoring it a little bit into my own words, um, making it a little bit clearer, more concise. And now you can see me just elaborating on the ideas that were already contained within the extract. So I'm adding my own thoughts um, adding something that wasn't already there. And here you can see the cue and you can see the effect that uh, pressing next repetition has on the um, last repetition date. And you can see that the interval has been updated to two. So I've just multiplied the old interval one by the A factor two to get the new interval two. So I'll see this uh, extract again in two days. One important part about incremental writing is that you only write up until the point where you start to lose interest. Um, incremental writing is a non-linear form of writing, so you don't have to persist stubbornly <laughs> through displeasure and um, misery uh, as if you're writing an essay at university or something. Um, you can simply write for as long as you want and then hit next repetition and you'll be teleported to the next thing in your queue. So one of the major complaints that learners have when using a spaced repetition system or incremental reading is that breaking things down into atomic parts can cause them to lose the bigger picture. But to the extent this is actually the case, I believe it's a good thing, because in order to create new concepts, or novel concepts, and to generate ideas with a new quality, you must first destructively decompose the old articles and concepts into their underlying parts, and then recombine them 
into those new articles and concepts. So once you finish an article, you'll want to publish it into the real world. For example, on your blog, uh, even on Twitter, or in a journal if you're a researcher. Once you've published it, you can receive feedback from people in the real world who read what you've written. And then having received feedback, you can take the feedback and the article and you can recycle it back into your incremental reading queue. That means you can take the article that you wrote and break it back down into its parts and interleave it with all of the other knowledge in your collection to continue to creatively develop your ideas over time. Hopefully it's clearer now how the two processes of incremental reading and incremental writing are entwined in a cycle of destruction and creation. Incremental reading is destructive in the sense that you are separating extracts from the parent article and leaving them to float around in the sea of anarchy of your learning queue. By contrast, incremental writing is creative or constructive in the sense that you're taking those extracts that you created in incremental reading and combining them back together into a new article. So finally, I'm going to sum up the advantages and disadvantages of incremental writing. The primary advantage for me of incremental writing is that it really supports creative writing. When you recombine the extracts from your incremental reading queue, you aren't reassembling them like a jigsaw puzzle back into the parent articles of those extracts. Rather, you're combining them in new combinations, creating an entirely new quality. Incremental writing also really supports the process of creative elaboration. Incremental writing achieves this by spacing your writing sessions over long periods of time, allowing you to consolidate your memories about a given subject and create new generalizations and ideas that you can add to your old writing um, when you come back to it. Because you're primarily dealing with paragraph sized chunks, it becomes extremely easy to remix and recombine your old ideas into new articles. Finally, incremental writing maximizes the enjoyment and pleasure of writing. Because it's a non-linear form of writing, you aren't forcing yourself to sit and write about some topic even when you don't want to. You simply uh, write as much as you feel like you can and then you move on to the next piece of writing uh, in your queue. Finally, let's talk about the disadvantages of incremental writing. And for me, there's really only one major disadvantage and that's if you need to write for a deadline. Incremental writing takes place over a very long period of time and it might not be suitable if you uh, face a deadline within the next month. Okay, so that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks for watching and remember to follow me on Twitter if you have any feedback. Tweet at Xperia Learning and there'll also be links in the description to an article version of this presentation and also to the plugin that I wrote for Obsidian. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in the next video.